God bless you and welcome to the Victory Tabernacle Church uh, Bible study. Uh, we are declaring that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me today, and let us exalt his name together. The writer says, for I sought the Lord, and he heard my cry, and delivered me out of all of my distresses. And I don't know about you, but there's one thing about seeking the Lord. When we seek him, we shall find him. When we find him, we shall find help. I'm thankful today that it's another day that the Lord has kept us. We're winding down to the end of the day, but we're thankful that God has kept us and kept us from all evil. And certainly when we say that today, those are words that are not just words of rhetoric. It's so much evil that is going on in the world, so many problems going on in the world, so much wickedness. I tell you, as I tell you all the time, there's a devil loose and he's real. But we know that God is almighty. God is still in control. And we realize it is of the Lord's mercies today that we are not consumed. We're thanking God for his compassion towards us. Yes, his loving kindness towards us, his graciousness towards us. It's because of those things we are not consumed. And therefore, God blesses us with new mercies every day. He's a faithful God. The songwriter says, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. All I have needed, thou hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And I believe that's your testimony tonight, too, that God has been faithful to you. Yes, the Lord is on our side. And if the Lord is on our side, we don't have to worry. God is for us, and if God is for us, who can be against us? So we're grateful tonight for God just being God. Not only is he God uh, that take care of this universe, he's created these worlds, and he's from everlasting to everlasting, but then the tender side of God, the relational side of God, he is our shepherd, and we thank God that he takes care of his sheep. So we're grateful tonight for that. We thank you uh, for continuing to pray for us and continuing to support us. Uh, we just thank God for those of you that I tell you right now, I, again, I know I sound redundant, but I am constantly humbled by the fact that the Lord is putting it upon your heart to support this ministry and this ministry is reaching far and wide yes and we're just thankful uh, for you for doing that and we're so grateful uh, we have a church in uh, Mozambique Nakala Port Mozambique young man that we uh, uh, sponsored at Shaw who is now the mayor of uh, Nicola Port and Raul Navente and uh, heard from him just a couple of weeks ago and God is still a blessing and he's waiting for me to uh, come over there and to officially you know establish the church but they are still growing in the midst of all that is going on over there in that land I tell you God is so good so I want you to know that uh, the gifts that you send in uh, they are reaching far and wide and whatever happens with this ministry we know that you have a, uh, you have a stake in it you have a share in the blessings that God will bestow upon uh, this great work and it was certainly trickle down to you. So we're grateful for that. We'll continue to pray for those of our ministry uh, who are still uh, going through uh, uh, their um, recovery, their grief recovery, uh, suffering loss in, um, in their families. And, and I tell you, um, 
we, we, we're just praying for you uh, victory. And those of you that we're not aware of that you're suffering loss, we're lifting you to the Lord also. We are in person now, but you do have to register uh, to be a part of that in-person worship. We are uh, social distancing and uh, we're taking all measures to keep uh, ourselves safe and you safe. So um, we're limited to how many uh, uh, we can uh, see by um, only cutting it into half, you know, so, but we still can accommodate um, 250 people, you know, cutting it in half. And so uh, when we fill up that space, then that's it, you know, uh, you can get on the next list. So, but I'm believing God to turn this thing around and many of us have shots now. So that makes it, excuse me, a little bit easier uh, to um, uh, place people. So we are grateful for that, but we want to continue to follow the CDC guidelines uh, when it comes to uh, this coronavirus, but we're just thankful for what God is doing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity now, Lord, to uh, get into your word, Father. We thank you for it. It is your word, Lord, that is keeping us in the midst of trying times, in the midst of evil times, in the midst of perilous times, God. We thank you for your word, God, your word of hope, your word of strength, your word of healing, your word of life, God, your word of deliverance, God, your word of salvation, Father, and we just give you glory for it is in your word, Father, we find in hiding place. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word we're putting in our hearts, God, to help us combat the enemy when he comes with uh, temptation against us. So we ask you now, Lord, to continue to bless our uh, grieving, uh, those that are in sorrow, continue to bless those that are dealing uh, with um, the pain, God, of um, the, the pushback from this virus. Lord, we thank you for making ways for them, and we thank you for how you're keeping on making ways. We thank you for just allowing us to be back in person in our morning worship, Father, and we just give you glory. Bless us now, God, as we go into your word. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, um, we are in this uh, series and this study, Arm Yourself, and we're grateful that God is blessing us through this word. One of our goals, as it seems like that, when we, uh, our foundational scripture, like we may be varying from that, but we are not. One of our goals are uh, to lay the foundation so that when we get to the armor, we will fully see it in action, or we have already have seen it in action, and we're seeing it working, and we're learning how it works through the word. So we're building up a case here. We're, we're going somewhere with this. So you bear with us. Not like that we off on a rabbit trail. All of this combined together will help us when we get to putting on the armor. We'll be ready uh, because we'll have been through boot camp and spiritual boot camp rather, and we'll know how it works and how it affects us. So Ephesians, if you're just joining us, uh, chapter 6 um, uh, and we begin reading at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all things, take the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we're just thankful again that we are, are, are in this study because truly we have to arm ourselves against the enemy, arm ourselves against the temptations of the enemy. We look at some examples um, in the Old Testament 
uh, of how that there's spiritual warfare going on in the heavenlies that affects us in the earth realm. And, and, and the things that we do in the earth realm, we say it will affect those things that are going on in the heavenlies. It's, it's like that when we are praying, uh, we, we are like cheerleaders for our angels rallying uh, them on to, to, to do our bidding, and we're not even aware of it. But isn't it wonderful that we were able to, to see in the study how that Daniel kept praying for 21 days, and, and while he was praying, the angels, because of he was praying and, and, and trusting and believing God, they were working on his behalf, and he got the answer. So we saw that, how that angels uh, aid in this warfare, how God uses them to aid in this warfare and how they benefit us. We also looked at how uh, our last study in First Chronicles 21 and 1, how it said that Satan stood up against Israel. Satan rose up against Israel and he did that by using their leader, by tempting David to do something that uh, violated uh, God's word violated God's way. He numbered the people. So we saw that in the Old Testament. So tonight we want to spring forward to the New Testament and see uh, some examples of warfare that is going on um, in the New Testament. And we now move from a heavenly scene to an earthly scene of warfare. So we want to pick that up tonight Get Matthew 4, if you're following us, Matthew chapter 4, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And we're going to also parallel uh, Luke uh, 4, 1 through 13, which is a similar um, um, text. But Luke, being a historian and being a physician, um, kind of highlights some things that kind of make it all comes together even the more. You know, both, both of these are part of the synoptic gospels where they, they write in simpler fashion, but everybody giving you a different angle to help bring clarity to the word. So Matthew 4, chapter, Matthew 4, uh, chapter 4 rather, beginning at verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Then when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was at the wars and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Jesus, um, you know, he answers him. But he answered him and said, if, but he answered him and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taking him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. There it is. Even the devil knows the word of God. And at their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taking him up into an exceeding high mountain and showing him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Then the devil leave, leave, leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Very important. So also, um, we'll see here in Luke chapter 4, and similar text, but a little bit different information, beginning at verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterwards hungered. hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word of God. 
and the devil taking him up into a high mountain show up unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and whosoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee hence behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only thou shalt serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, ye shall give, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. So then, now we see here, last uh, study, we saw this heavenly um, uh, confrontation wherein that Daniel was not aware of what Satan was doing in the heavenlies and Satan was making war against him in the heavenlies and yet in the end uh, you know the angels came to Daniel and told him what had happened but now we see a confrontation on the earth yes and, and it is very interesting that that you know Listen, listen what the scripture says here, uh, that um, when Jesus was led up out of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now we see that he uh, has been baptized and, and, and he's, you know, uh, uh, baptized and, and, and God's word is declared upon him. Let's go, just go over, just flip over to to uh, chapter three. You had chapter four, just, just flip over to chapter three and listen here what uh, the Bible says beginning at verse uh, 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water and lo, the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and light upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now Jesus is baptized. And now we see that his baptism is validated by the Godhead. You have Jesus who is there. You have God who speaks and says, this is my beloved son. You have the Holy Spirit who descends upon him like a dove. So you have the triune God uh, witnessing Jesus' baptism and validating that he is the son of God. But then our text <clears throat> immediately, it, it, it comes in verse 3 and says, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of God. It now, see, that lets us know that when God tells us who we are, Satan's design is to try to change the image in our mind of who God says we are. Now Jesus is baptized and the father declares that he is his son. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Satan comes right back around and tries to thwart the word of God, tries to twist the word of God, tries to nullify the word of God and says, if you be the son of God. Now you get a good uh, glimpse of how Satan comes after us and try to tell us what we are not. God says that we are saved. He said, whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died and God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Because he tells us that, you know, we believe in our hearts and our confession is made into salvation. And just, it's amazing how that once, when you think about your life in totality, 
First of all, it's amazing how God can save us. And, and when we think about the fact how God can save us in an instance, it's even, even more amazing. It's mind-boggling how that you can go from saint to sinner just by repeating some words. That's why the Bible says that the just shall live by their faith. That's why the Bible said without faith, it's impossible to please God. So our faith is in the fact that whatever God says, if we do it, then God will do what he said. If you call on his name, then he said he will save you. So if you call him, ask him to save you, you repent, you confess your sins, then God will save you. Now immediately the devil comes right back around and try to convince you that you are not saved. And the reason why he wants to do that is because salvation uh, causes us to take on a whole new life. Salvation disconnects us from the dominion of Satan, from the authority of Satan, from being under the control of Satan. And Satan does that through tempting us to sin. Now, Satan wants us to continue in that vein we once were in. He wants us to keep doing the things we once done. He wants us to keep walking in the way we once walked. In other words, Satan uh, don't want us to change. So he tries to come right back around and question our salvation. This is what he done to Jesus. Jesus now was just baptized and we said he was ratified by the Godhead, the, the, the Father, the Son, and himself. Now Satan comes back and say, well, if you be. And somebody listen to me tonight. The Bible says that he sent his word and his word heals us. When we get in the word of God and we find out that there's deliverance, there's healing, there's wholeness, there's salvation, there's strength, amen, there's soundness of mind, there's peace, and the list goes on. When we read God's word and we see what God says, then we ought to say what God says about us. For the Bible declared, Isaiah said that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Think about that. So, Somebody is believing God for your healing, but Satan wants to make you think that you are not healed. Now, remember, the Bible says that the just shall live by their faith. We walk by our faith. We don't walk by symptoms. We know there's a reality to that. But yet, you know, when you said you're healed, uh, then, you know, you, you got to hold to God's word. We're going to see how that play out in this study. You know, for the last six months, I've been just dealing with this uh, plantar uh, fasciitis in my left heel. And I tell you right now, it has really been something, you know. But my wife constantly reminds me that, you know, she prayed for me. Uh, and, and I'm thankful for that. I, see, that's the beauty of marriage. The Bible said where there are two or three gathered together. So when you are married, you know, right there, you've already met the qualifications and you can pray together and God can do great things. God can do mighty things. That's why Satan tries to come and get into your marriage and create havoc and, and create unrest and, and rupture your relationship because the Bible says that when that re relationship is ruptured, then you two can't agree. Your prayers are hindered. Man, think about that. Wow. Satan wants to hinder our prayers. So let's look at it from this angle. When he creates chaos in your marriage, when he calls misunderstandings, when he tempts you to say things you shouldn't say, when he tempts you to act out of character, Christian character, and act in the flesh, the only thing he's trying to do is to put a wedge between you two because his ultimate goal is not that you fuss one another out. His ultimate goal is not that uh, 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 you don't sleep together. His ultimate goal is not that you are not speaking, saying good morning when you get up or good night or have a great day. All of those things it is not Satan's goal. His main goal is to hinder your 
prayers. Think about that. If I don't say nothing else tonight, think about that. So when, this, when, when Satan tempts you to, 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 to walk in the flesh, when Satan tempts you to, to act out in the flesh, when Satan tempts you, because you know, we're gonna be tempted, we already see this now, uh, but, but we don't have to yield to that temptation. Remember, Satan's ultimate goal is to hinder your prayers. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to get through this world, I want you to know you don't want your prayers hindered. Because as a couple, you have to pray about your relationship. You have to pray about your finances. You have to pray about your jobs. You have to pray about your children. You have to pray for protection. You have, and the list goes on the things that you will pray for as partners. But remember, Satan wants to hinder those prayer. So once he divides us, our prayers will be hindered. So again, we see now that as he comes to Jesus and he tells him, he says that, you know, if you be the son of God, you know, and he says something that, that along with that, he said, command these stones to be made bread. And what does Jesus do? He quotes the word of God to Satan. We're talking about spiritual warfare here now. There's no use you talking to Satan and telling him a whole bunch of stuff and calling him a whole bunch of names. You already know who he is. You know his names. You know his M.O. You know how he operates and all. But the thing that works against the devil is the word of God. And Jesus himself causes us to see this and understand this. Now remember, Jesus comes you know, uh, from his baptism. He's getting ready to start his ministry and the spirit leads him into the wilderness to be tempted. Now that gets a little dicey because, you know, uh, James says, you know, don't let any man say that he's tempted by God. But this here, temptation here is the, the trying. This is the testing. And so, what does that tell us to, to, tonight? It tells us that Jesus said that the, the servant is not greater than the master. If the master have to go through some things and deal with some things, the servant ought to think, you know, hey, uh, it, it, it's nothing when it happens to me, you know, because if the master had to do it, certainly I'm not greater than the master. But what am I saying in essence? I'm saying if Jesus was tempted, then you can expect to be tempted. Think about that. As Satan came to Jesus, the son of God knew the power he had. Satan knew what power he had, knew what powers he possessed. Satan knew what he could do. If he done that towards Jesus, how much more can we expect him to come against us? But then Jesus quotes the word. He, he relies on the inerrant word of God for all of us that want to throw out the Old Testament, and especially now, you know, biblical scholars and colleges and seminaries and all is writing out the Old Testament. And, but notice what Jesus quotes. He quotes the Old Testament. So let's get Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy 8. Listen what Jesus does here. Uh, and beginning at verse 1, he says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall be observed to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in to possess the land which the Lord swore unto thee. Now notice, people think the commandments are basically just about doing right and doing wrong and, and pleasing God, and they are. But notice what the scripture says here. He says here that, that his commandments, uh, if we observe them and live by them, causes us to multiply, causes us to possess uh, the land, causes us to be blessed, causes us to walk in the fullness that God desires for us. 
And then he says in verse 2, And thou shalt remember all the ways which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Now we notice that this 40 keeps popping up. We'll talk about that too. These 40 years in the wilderness. To humble thee and to prove thee to know what's in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy father know that, that, that he might make thee know that man does not <clears throat> live, excuse me, by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. What, what, what is he trying to do here? Jesus, uh, Deuteronomy said that he uh, led them in the wilderness to prove them, to try them, to test them, uh, uh, to humble them. And he did that, and he did that in a way wherein that he says that he fed them manna, and he did it on a daily basis. What was the premise? What, what was God trying to accomplish here? That man should understand that he cannot operate independent of God. That's what Satan was trying to do with Jesus. He was trying to get him to operate independent of God's will, to go on his own and do what he wanted to do the way he wanted to do. But Jesus resisted that temptation. And he says that he did this and he gave the man up daily, representing that, that, that in order for us uh, to uh, survive the temptations of Satan, we need the word of God operating in our lives on a daily basis. Yes, we need the word of God, you know, to, um, uh, to help us as we go through our temptations on a daily basis. So now we see that, that, that he, he does this and, and, and we find out that, you know, God's will for us, amen, is, is the thing that, that allows us to walk in a perfect way so that Satan doesn't tempt us or Satan doesn't try, Satan doesn't side track us. But notice something here. Now, here it is that Jesus is tempted. Here it is that the scripture says that, uh, uh, that uh, he leads them in this wilderness to prove them, to, to test them, to, to try them. And he, he gave them manna daily. In other words, he put them in a position of need. And he put them in a position of need where he's using manna here or he gave them water from the rock. God is trying to get us to understand that we have to live on God's word. How we're going to make it through this life is living according or standing on God's word, standing on God's promises. The only thing that Israel had that God was God promised that he would take care of them. Now, he leads them out in this wilderness, you know, to prove them, to test them, to try them. And the only thing they had was that uh, was his promise, was his word. And this is what God is trying to do. God would allow situations to come in our lives that everything is taken away the only thing we have left to rely on is his word. The only thing we have to, to trust is his promises. This is what Jesus did. Now Jesus is out in this wilderness. You know, he's hungered, you know, for 40 days. And now Satan tries to come and tempt him. Now, now, now this, is, this is good and this is interesting because... Um, Let's go to Job chapter 1. Job 1. Verse 9. 
Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? Has thou not made a hedge about him, about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the works of his hand, and his substance is increased in the land. Now notice something here. This is powerful. This is very powerful. Because what did we just talk about? We just talked about that God says that he took them out there to prove them, to see whether or not they would keep his commandments, to see whether or not they would follow his word, to see whether or not they would, you know, uh, 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 live according to his word. Now we see here that, you know, when Satan knew what Jesus had access to, he said, if you be the son of God, work a miracle. Turn these stones into bread. Now, he already knew what Jesus could do. He, he already knew what Jesus was capable of doing because he knew that he was the son of God. And he said, if you be the son of God. Now, here Satan is because one of the reasons God proves us, one of the reasons God tests us, he says to see what is in our hearts is because our time we find ourselves that we live by God's word or we stand on God's promises or we trust God as long as everything is coming forth or manifesting itself accordingly. Whatever God said, God is bringing it to the past. Whatever God said, God is doing it. Whatever God said in his word, he's manifesting. Now God takes them out of the wilderness to prove them, to test them, to see whether or not they were lived by his command. He said to see what was in their heart, what was in their minds, what was in their spirit, whether or not they would, you know, do, obey God. Now we see here that Satan, this guy is clever. And that's why you got, we said in the beginning of this lesson, you need to know who you are dealing with. Now, Satan here in Job says, well, I tell you the reason why he's so good, why he's so perfect, why he uh, eschews evil, why he does what is right, because you have blessed him. I tell you right now, that fills my, my heart, my mind, and my spirit. Because the enemy tries to make us think we have nothing. We're not blessed. We're struggling. We're trying to make ends meet. We're trying to make it through here. We're doing the best we can. He tries to make us think that to keep us dispossessed in mind. He can't dispossess us, but he can dispossess us in mind. Trying to make you think. See, the battle, remember what we said the other week? You know, this, this battle starts in the mind. The battlefield is our minds. So Satan tries to do all this. What, am, what is the point that I'm making? I'm going to close on this one because I want this one to sink in. If the devil see that you are blessed, if the devil knows you are blessed, if the devil can name your blessings one by one, if the devil can call out God's goodness and God's great works in your life, that ought to humble us to the point that we repent and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for allowing the enemy to dispossess me in my mind. I am blessed. I am well. I am healthy. I am delivered. I am secure. I am safe. I have peace. I am covered. I have strength. And the list can go on. That, that we can start confessing, amen, because that confession also, like our salvation, becomes a part 
of who we are. That confession is made into salvation. That confession causes us to possess the things that we don't yet have that God says that we can have. So listen what he says here. And I, I'm on the end on this. I don't want to go any further because I want this to really sink in. He says, has thou not made a hedge about him? Are you not keeping him wherever he goes? I tell you, think about that. Amen. I remember that the old saints used to say, you ought to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. But I stopped by here to tell you that Satan says that, you know, he's with you. Now, if Satan can tell you that the Lord is with you, even when you go through the valleys of the shadow of death, you ought not fear no evil because you know that thou art with me. Satan knows that. Satan is aware of that. Satan sees that God is with you. You want to know why Satan knows that God is with you? Because if he weren't, you know, he would have done taken you out a long time ago. Hallelujah. I tell you right now, that made me want to shout, you know, even on this uh, bad hill, amen, that, that, that God, amen, is with me. And Satan can't do anything to me unless it's filtered through God's hand. And if it's filtered through God's hand like he led them out in the wilderness, like Jesus was led out to be tempted, then you know that God has a purpose behind it. And every purpose behind God is perfect. Every purpose behind God is good. Every purpose behind God is to bless us. And it, as the old adage is, is to bless our socks off of us. I tell you, listen what Satan said. Has not he made an hedge? About him, you know, they, uh, uh, they, they sing that song, Jesus, build a fence all around me every day. Well, I want you to know that Jesus has already built the fence around you. Satan says he's got a hedge around you, even if you're not singing it. Hallelujah. I tell you right now, I mean, that rejoices my soul. He says, and about his house. All of his dealings, all of his doings about his house, not just his dwelling, anything connected to his house. Man, I think about when they, 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 they stole the ark and they took it and they put it in uh, uh, Abinadab's house. How the, the Bible said that the Lord blessed his house. All he had, his servant, his cattle. Man, I tell you right now, I mean, I'm getting excited. I got to, I got to kind of calm down here. But he says, and this is the devil talking now, saying that he has blessed your house. Now you need to start confessing. Thank you, Lord, for my heads. Thank you for my protection. Thank you for my ministering angels. Thank you, Lord, for hedging my house. Thank you for protecting my house, my, my family, my husband, my wife, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, the, the list goes on. My siblings, yes, yes, this is my heritage. He says, and about the house, and about all that, all that he has on every side. Listen, 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 listen. I got the clothes, but I'm getting happy. Listen what Satan says. Listen at this picture he paints of the God we serve. Listen at this picture he paints of the God that says that I come that you might have life and that you might have that life more abundantly. When the devil has to sit up and take notice that you're blessed like that. And you know what? He doesn't like it. That's why he, he tries to tear Job down. He tries to destroy Job. But, but the main point is here that he says that well, the only reason why they worship you, the only reason why they're singing every day, the only reason why they're praying, the only reason why they're loving you is because you're doing so many great things in their lives. You're just, you just doing so much. They don't have no other reason but to love you back because the way you're loving them. He says, and about all that he hath on every side. Listen to that Satan description of how God has blessed you. Amen. Turn to the right. 
He's blessed you. Turn to the left. He's blessed you. Look straight ahead. He's blessed you. Look behind you. He's blessed you. Matter of fact, look behind you again. Because he says these blessings I cause to come upon you and overtake you. In other words, come from behind you. You ain't even seen. But oh, hallelujah. You, you, ain't, you looking to the right. You looking to the left. You looking straight ahead thinking that that's where your blessing is coming from. And God said, it's, hallelujah, it's sneaking up on you. I tell you right there, boy, I, I almost got in preaching mode here. But, 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 but this is what Satan says here. Then he says, and his substance is increased in the land. And his substance is increased in, increased in the land. I, I want to say this, that, you know, you, you can have things and be blessed by God with things, but those things doesn't have to have you. A lot of people, you know, uh, they, they criticize money and they talk about riches. No, 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 no. You don't, you, you, you can have all of those things, but they just don't have to have you because the Bible says the abundance of what a man has does not consist in those things. He got them, that's fine. But if I told you in Sunday mornings, uh, last Sunday's worship, but if he takes them away, you're going to still be happy. You're going to still praise him. You're going to still serve him. You're going to still love him. Yeah, you're going to still honor him. You're going to still obey him. If he takes them away, that's what Satan tried to tell uh, God about Job. If you take them away, then he's going to curse you. Yeah, if you take them away, you know, you'll see how much they prayed in. So now we understand the strategy of the devil. We understand the strategy of the enemy. And now we can, we can see that in situations where it seems like they're not really panning out for us, we don't have to worry about that because we know we're blessed. We don't have to worry about that because the, what, who we are does not consist in what we have and what we're doing or what we own, what we possess. What we are consists in the God that created us and the God that loves us and the God that will see us through. I tell you right now, I, when I, 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 I can't get away from this, but this is what we're going to end. We're going to end with you laying down, laying your head on your pillow tonight and saying to yourself, if the devil can see I'm blessed, Lord, have mercy. Keep my mind. Help me, God, to continuously praise you for how you have blessed me, how you have put a hedge of protection around me, how you have blessed my house, how you have blessed my heritage, how you have increased my substance. And God knows he has increased our substance. And we ought to give God glory and honor and praise. So now we see that, hey, if Jesus can be tempted, so can we. Now we see if Jesus can resist the enemy, we can resist the enemy also. Now we see if Job tried, if uh, Satan tried to discredit Job's character and impugn his integrity and, and, and say that, you know, he was a hypocrite. He was just worshiping God for what he could get, for what God could do. And we see in the life of Job and the story of Job that that was not the case because he ended up with nothing. And he said, naked came I into this world. Naked, I shall return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. We are blessed. And the devil knows we are blessed. And somebody said, the devil doesn't like it because we're blessed like that. What a mighty God we serve. This is warfare, y'all. And, 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 and now we have some ammunition to fight the devil with. I don't care what it looked like, Satan, I'm blessed. I don't care what you say, I'm blessed. I don't care what I'm going through, I'm blessed. I don't care what is happening, I'm blessed. 
God has blessed me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now for your word today. And we thank you uh, for how you're blessing us tonight in this study. You're confirming with us. You are the triune God. As you validated your son, Jesus, and you said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased, and the spirit descended upon him. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have validated us, letting us know you are God. You are our provider. You are our keeper. Your spirit is leading us. Your spirit is with us. Father, we thank you right now. And Lord, we just thank you for making our souls happy. We just thank you, Lord, for rejoicing our hearts. We just thank you, God, for lifting our spirits, God. For we recognize now, Lord, that even Satan knows that we are blessed beyond measures. Help us to keep this in our mind, that we are blessed. In spite of what we're dealing with and going through, in spite of what it looks like, that we are blessed. Even though we don't deserve it, we are blessed. Now, Father, there's somebody out there, Lord, that Satan is trying to convince, Lord, to, uh, uh, that they, uh, you, you don't love them. They're not good enough for you to love them. And you could never love them because of what they have done, where they've been, the things they've involved themselves into. Lord, but you love us unconditionally. And Lord, that person now, that Satan, is trying to hold into that life of sin. We're praying, Lord, for their deliverance. We're praying right now, God, because you already have another plan for them, and that plan is salvation. And if you're that person tonight, listen to me. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for letting me know that you have a better life for me. You have another plan for me, and that plan is salvation. I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die. You love me enough. You sent your son Jesus to die to pay my sin debt. And I believe that he died and he took care of my sin debt. I believe you raised him from the dead. You gave him new life. Now he's offered me that life. And by faith, I received that life into my heart. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Come into my heart. And I believe now that you've come into my heart and you've saved me. Lord, you've made me a new creation. And I thank you now for salvation. Even when the Satan will come now and try to tell me that I'm not saved. Lord, I know by your word, I stand on your promise that I'm saved. I'm a new creation. And I give you praise for that, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. And I'll tell you right now, we are arming ourselves. We are positioning ourselves to do battle against the enemy. And what are you going to lay down with tonight? You're going to lay down with tonight that even Satan can't deny that you are blessed. Even Satan is giving testimony of your blessing. Even Satan is witnessing of the mighty things that God has done in your life. God bless you. Have a good night's rest. And we'll look to see you on Sunday morning that the Lord should tarry and we should live for another word of worship. God bless you tonight.